Hello, today we are going to learn the basic fundamentals of how to dimension an architectural, engineering or technical drawing. A dimension is a numerical value expressed in appropriate units of measurement such as millimeters, inches, centimeters, etc. And they are used to define the size, location, orientation, shape or other geometric characteristics of an object. Dimensions are a method of communication to fabricators in the production facility. There are different kinds of dimensions such as linear, aligned, angular, radiuses, diameters, etc. The size and position of each feature must be completely defined once and only once. So now we are going to learn the basic fundamental rules for dimensioning a technical drawing. The first rule is to avoid aligning dimension lines with object lines or axes, as you can see in the red color on the screen. The proper way to do this is to separate the dimension lines from the object lines, as you can see here with the green lines on the screen. Rule number two. Rule number two is to leave adequate space between dimension lines so that we have enough room to add in the numerical dimension. Again, on the screen, the red dimension lines don't have enough space and the green ones do, uh, which are separated by a distance of approximately 10 millimeters. Rule number three, the extension lines which are the lines that connect the object with the dimension lines. Can't finish at the arrowhead or the termination symbol. They must be slightly longer as shown with the green color on the screen. Rule number four. There are many ways to represent the termination symbol or arrowhead. In our video, we use a filled in black color arrowhead at approximately 30 degrees angle. But there are many other ways to represent the termination symbols as shown here. The first one is a similar triangle that is unfilled and open at the base. The next one is exactly the same but closed at the base. The third one is open again with no base but at a 45 degree angle. And the next one is used extensively in architecture. So the termination symbols are two lines at 45 degrees as shown. And finally, you can sometimes find these unfilled circles used as termination symbols also. Rule number five. Rule number five are rules for similar dimensions. There are different ways to represent smaller dimensions. So for example, when we don't have enough space to fit the arrowhead between the dimension lines, we locate them on the outside of the dimension lines, as can be seen here on the left side of the screen. And if we don't have enough space to write the dimension value between the extension lines, you can also put at one of the outside termination symbols that we've just drawn. Another method to dimension smaller dimensions is to use 45 degree angle termination symbols, as can be seen here on the screen. Rule number six. Rule number six is that dimension lines do not cross other dimension lines or extension lines. You can see in red a good example of what not to do. And in the next shot, the way is should be dimensioned. Rule number seven, you can only use extension lines from the same viewpoint, either plan view or elevation view or side view, but you can never mix. Rule number eight, text size and fonts. We generally use a font size 2.5 millimeters to five millimeters, depending on the complexity of the drawing. So for bigger, more complex drawings with a lot of dimensions, we can probably use 2.5 millimeter text size. And for smaller, less complicated drawings with less dimensions, we can use a bigger text size of five millimeters. And the font we normally use is Arial. 
Basically, you want the dimensions to fit well with the drawing. So as to, so as you can see here in red, the dimensions are too small. And in the second example, the dimensions too small. So basically, we are looking for a dimension size, which is visually pleasing and that is adequate for the drawing. Rule number nine. You should never put more dimensions than necessary in a drawing. Because there is one error, this error will get com compounded with too many dimensions. As you can see with the red line, red dimensions in the drawing are unnecessary. As we can work out these dimensions without writing them by subtracting the others. 35 minus 18 is 17, so we don't need the 17, for example. Rule number 10. When we have two or more views, we need to try to adequately share the dimensions between the views. So as can be seen here on the screen, we put three dimensions on the plan view and the rest on the elevation view. I recommend that you dimension each shape in the view. You can more easily distinguish the measurements as can be seen on the screen. Rule number 11. How to position the dimension values with the dimension lines. We are going to show you three different options. With the first option, we always locate the dimension values in the center of the dimension lines and the same direction or angle as the dimension lines, as can be seen here. If the dimension line is vertical, we locate the dimension value to its left and in the center. We can also see the same method with dimensioning angles. The dimension value is following the angle of the dimension lines again. Another example, here we can see in the screen. So the second method to locate the dimension values is to place them in the center of the dimension lines, interrupting the dimension lines except for the horizontal lines. And furthermore, the dimension values are always horizontal. Here we can see the same method with angles interrupting the dimension lines in the center, but always written horizontally. So now, on a third way, which is very similar to the second way, we keep the dimension values horizontal, but in this case, we locate them outside the dimension lines rather than interrupting them, as can be seen here. Rule number 12. Types of dimensioning methods. There are two main methods for dimensioning technical drawings. Number one is chain dimensioning, which can only be, which can be seen on the screen. We should only use this method when the accumulation of tolerances will not affect the part as the possibility of making measurement errors can accumulate. And method number two is parallel dimensioning, where the dimensions are taken from a common datum as can be seen on the screen again. And with this method, there is less possibility of accumulating errors than in method number one. Sometimes we use a mixture of both methods, method number one and method number two, as can be seen here on the screen. Rule number 13. How to dimension circles and circular shapes. If we have a complete circle, we always indicate the diameter and we must be careful not to coincide it with the construction lines axis, axis as can be seen here on the screen. So in this case, we put it at a 45 degree angle and the dimension symbol is optional. So if the piece is, is a cylinder, as can be seen here, from the side view, we can locate the dimension on either end of the cylinder. But in this case, it is mandatory to put the diameter symbol, obviously, so people can realize that they are looking at a cylindrical shape rather than a rectangle. If we have to dimension more complex cylindrical shapes, as can be seen here on the screen, with two different circle sizes in the view, where you can see the circumferences, we only put a maximum of two diameter dimensions ever. So if the shape has three or more concentrical cylinders or circles, we must locate them on the other view, which we can see in examples three and examples four. To find this rule, if we have this kind of concentrical cylindrical shapes, we can define them perfectly correct with only this view as shown here on the screen. Rule number 14. 
How to dimension shapes with arcs, radiuses and chamfers. To dimension arcs less than 180 degrees, we use dimension radiuses and are, there are three different styles that we can use, depending on the size of the arc and the space available in the drawing. The first one is the dimension value and the arrowhead are inside the arc. The second style is the arrowhead is inside the arc and the dimension value and dimension line outside the arc. And in the third one is everything is outside the arrowhead dimension value as can be seen here. If the center of the arc that we are dimensioning is too long to fit in the drawing, we can draw only a part of the radius, but it can be aligned with the center as can be seen here on the screen. Rule number 15, spherical dimensions. When dimensioning a sphere before the dimension value, we always put capital S to indicate it's a sphere. When we have a sphere less than 180 degrees, we write SR which is the spherical radius. When it's greater than 180 degrees, we write S and dimension symbol. And you don't need to draw the full diameter, but you need to indicate the full diameter value. And in case number three, when it's close to a complete sphere, we draw the full diameter and therefore we don't need the dimension symbol after the capital S in the dimension value. Rule number 16, how to dimension incomplete or section views. So you can see half the cut step section view of a cylindrical shape. To indicate the diameters of this cut section, we use incomplete dimension lines that elongate a few millimeters past the symmetrical center axis. In the second example, this half part section to dimension the internal diameters you have to do it in the same way as before for the cut section and for the external diameters we dimension like a complete part as can be seen here. These views are very useful to dimension internal and external views in the one drawing and in both cases we use the dimension symbol. Rule number 17. How to dimension recurring equal elements. In this example, we have recurring equal circles, but they could equally be triangles, squares, rectangles, etc. Rather than dimensioning each one, we then dimension the distance to the center of the first. As you can see, 5 times 13 equals 65 to show the dimension of the remaining circle centers. And also, as the last part is not dimensioned, this means it is equal to 13. Otherwise, we would put a different dimension. And also, we only need to dimension one of the equal circles as shown here. So here you can see another example, but this time with a curved part where we use the same method of dimensioning, where the only difference is that dimension values are in angular degrees instead of millimeters. Well, here we have a summary of the main fundamental rules for dimensioning technical, architectural and engineering drawings. I hope you find this helpful. Please press like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until the next video, thank you. Bye bye.